the cypherpunks that emerged in the early 90s were hyper concerned about privacy, about personal liberty, and a lot of people had come up with their own systems. Some of them came very close to happening. The one that probably came the closest was DigiCash from David Chaum. Privacy of payments is actually essential for democracy. The reason is not because you need to be able to make private payments in order to express yourself, but rather that in order to inform yourself, you may need to purchase information, and that's the thing that allows you to have opinions uh, worth expressing. Although I wouldn't say David Chom was a cypherpunk, he definitely inspired the cypherpunk movement. It's as if the cypherpunks kind of came upon David Chom's tools, like the technology of some alien species, and they only took the weapons. They were most interested in the ones that could be used to disempower the government and empower individuals. The internet was starting to enter the mainstream in 1998. A computer engineer named Wei Dai published a white paper describing B-Money, anonymous electronic cash described as money which is impossible to regulate. Transactions are verified by the community who update a collective ledger book and are awarded B-Money for their effort. After the financial crisis, and you had people going back to those experiments in the 1990s and looking at new ways of putting those ideas together. Uh, Nick Szabo in 2006 had just finished up a midlife stint at law school. And if you look at Nick's writing around the financial crisis, that it really revived his interest in these ideas that you know he'd been working on in the 1990s with privacy and contracts and the problems of governments and other trusted third parties. And he brought Bitgold back into the conversation. 